watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 29th, 2024, let's get into it. So the first thing that I wanted to point out, we've got some really good news coming out of Gaza for the IDF and for the um, all the uh, Israeli supporters in the United States, both on the left and the right, especially the Christians. Uh, it seems that there's been an outbreak now of polio in the uh, in the Palestinian uh, refugees that are left alive after being bombed to death with 2,000-pound uh, bombs. Uh, of course, yesterday, my last video, I showed you now that their tent encampments are in cemeteries. So uh, they've been driven out of even even the, the place where the buildings existed. And the good news is the Israelis have destroyed all of the hospitals. So there's no way. Uh, and of course, it's not just polio. There's other diseases. In fact, an Israeli official just came out and he said, this is great news. Uh, that we can mow the grass a lot faster this way. And we don't even have to uh, send in IDF soldiers. The Palestinians will just die on their own. So that's good news for uh, all you Christians out there, you genocidal maniacs. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Definitely watch my last video as I, I show you some pretty graphic images. You know, it's funny, YouTube came out and they said, well, we've, we've changed your video to 18 plus. Of course, I thought I, maybe I missed that checkbox. I apologize to YouTube, you know, because obviously that was an 18 plus video. I try not to be too graphic in my videos, but sometimes that's the only way you bring home what's really taking place, right? So anyway, all you genocidal maniacs out there, you're getting your wish. I imagine before too long, we'll have two million dead Palestinians and Americans, uh, let's bring back Netanyahu, give him another 55 standing ovations, uh, that genocidal maniac, and, uh, and everybody clap like uh, happy seals, because you'll be happy seals because you killed two million people. So that's good news for everybody that uh, is an Israeli supporter, especially the U.S. Congress. This would be great news for them. Uh, I, you know, I would, I would like to see Congress go over and help dig the mass graves that we're going to need to bury all the Palestinians. I, I, you know, and I, take, I bet they would take great glee in that. Probably kick some of the bodies, maybe take a shovel, chop a few heads off, throw them into the mass graves, spit on them, uh, maybe take a piss on them. I think that'd be good. Whatever. That's, uh, that's that news. I tell you what, Elon Musk, he's the only billionaire that seems to get anything. I don't even understand where the other billionaire lunatics, of course, George Soros, that guy, uh, that's Palatine right there. I think that he serves Satan. And uh, anyway, but Elon, he came out and he pointed out, U.S. is going bankrupt. <laughs> no shit. But see, you know, my question is, what are the billionaires going to do? when all their money's worthless. Now, I understand they're buying up assets, which is what you need to do uh, with, with a lot of their money, but a lot of that money you can't stash. I mean, and what are you gonna do? Put it in another currency? I mean, because once the dollar goes, well, I guess you could put it in, in uh, uh, Russia. What is it, is it the ruble in Russia? I can't remember the name of the currency. Or you could put it in Chinese yuan, perhaps. I, I imagine those two currencies might survive when the dollar's completely worthless. Uh, but I, I just don't know where they're going to stick all those billions because, you know, understand that dollar is just a, a debt note. doesn't have any backing. It's not backed by anything. It's not backed by commodities. It's only backed by the, the lunacy faith of the United States people. And even that's not going to save it because once the world div uh, divests themselves of all their dollars, all we got here, and we'll be the only country with dollars anymore. <laughs> so, so I can't see how the dollar survives when it, it's a worthless piece of paper, right? Uh, and on that note, uh, I noticed, uh, check the price on silver right before making this video. It's at uh, $28 right now, $28. Uh, and that's, I, by the way, I, I tell you what, I did, I don't, I don't have any money, but I did get my, uh, my, my little uh, pension and, uh, and I pay, I'm paying down debt just as fast as I can. Hope you're doing the same. Uh, speaking of debt, uh, just to get on a different topic real quick, was uh, credit cards. Credit card defaults are at an all-time high. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's like a statistic. When, when I say all-time high, I think all-time high. As in never before in history have there been this many credit card defaults. So the American people, well, including myself, we're all hurting, man. We're hurting big time. So, uh, 
you know, if ever, people are defaulting on their credit cards, you know, I, I don't know what your options are. I mean, I, I always try to get on my box and preach on what you need to do. Uh, and, you know, I'm 60 years old and I'm kind of, I'm set in my house and I got nowhere I can go. I mean, unless I absolutely have to. But as a young person, you have options, man. You can get out there and buy, buy you a trailer. Get out of the damn uh, rental. You know, if you're paying $1,300 to $4,000 a month in rent, you're just pissing that money away. You know, if you got to go live in a tent or, or, you know, at a campground somewhere, or, you know, just at least when you buy the trailer, trailers are only, I don't know how much they are now. They used to only be about 30000 for a good used one and, you know, and live in a trailer park. Now, you don't own the land and you're just, you know, you're renting the land. But normally, the, the payment, even if you had to finance the trailer, the payment plus the rent, because a lot of those rentals are $500 or less for the land. So if your payment on the trailer, on a $30,000 loan, I mean, it shouldn't be more than $500, let's say, so for $1,000 a month. And I tell you what, living in a trailer is a hell of a lot better in my mind than living in an apartment where you got a bunch of freaks, you know, in other apartments, you know, all around you. I mean, I'm sorry, man. And of course, they're making noise, having parties, you know, beating on the walls, you know, uh, flushing the toilet upstairs, flooding it, flooding your apartment. You know, and then you got the landlord and say, you know, look, I got black mold. Landlord says, screw you. I can get me another renter. I mean, you know, I'm just saying there's a lot of problems with renting. And, uh, of course, those uh, Elon Musk tiny homes, I think that might be a good option for you if you're just a young person trying to get out on your own and make ends meet, you know, because you can't always live with the parents and work. You know, sometimes you got to move to other places to find work. I mean, good God, my life, I, I lived everywhere in the United States, <laughs> except, except out West. I never got out West. I w worked uh, pretty much uh, in, in the, the Midwest and uh, on the East Coast. So we already talked about this in an earlier video, but that satanic ritual that took place at the Olympics, that was something else, wasn't it? <laughs> man, oh man. But anyway, the good news is it, it, it's, been a, it's, it's a united backlash. Both Muslims and Christians across the world uh, have really uh, come out uh, against what took place in France. I don't know, you know, and that's kind of a what were they thinking moment. <laughs> must have been, must have been some DEI people in charge of the uh, the entertainment ceremony there. Uh, definitely, uh, they don't have any common sense whatsoever. You know, they may they may be satanic and demonic in their in their in their beliefs, but man, to throw that out and right in front of everybody, that was something else. I, I did want to talk about DEI. I put up a post here recently. I, I can't remember if I talked about it previously or not, but I. I was talking about if I had to share a foxhole with a Democrat DEI, no way, no how. Okay, and I said, that must make me a white racist. Because <laughs> I don't want no damn DEI in my foxhole, I can tell you that right now. Holy shit. So in the military, now that it's all DEI people, of course, we know the Secret Service is made up of DEI people. And you know, when, when I say DEI, I say the least qualified. All right? You know, we're no longer hire people based on merit or ability. We hire them on the color of their skin. Uh, it's called diversity. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, if I'm in the military and you pair me up with a DEI, I'm gonna tell you what. Uh, well, I won't say what I do, but they wouldn't be around me very long. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so I have just wanted to hit on DEI and that ceremony that took place in the backlash. That was the main thing. Another story you might not have heard, and this was huge, and we're gonna have a lot of this here in the United States was there was uh, in, in Northern Britain.
illegal immigrant kind of slums where they all, like the Romanians, all grouped together. And, uh, you know, see how they're, they're not integrating into society. They're hanging all together in their own little enclaves, you know, around Britain. Well, anyway, I, I don't know what happened. Oh, the police went in, and I guess it was a child trafficking uh, uh, household, and they, uh, they were going to break it up and, and seize the children. I think this is the story. Don't, don't hold my feet to the fire. But anyway, uh, regardless of what caused it, the whole damn uh, enclave erupted into riots. They uh, set buses on fire, overturned cars. I imagine they probably smashed in storefronts. I mean, this is, and these are all illegal immigrants. And uh, so that's, uh, that's coming to a neighborhood near you here in the United States. And uh, of course, the other thing was, uh, and I love it. I love it when the leftist lunatics come out and say exactly what we all knew from the get-go. And Elizabeth Warren, uh, she just came out and said that we need to provide all the illegal immigrants a pathway to citizenship and help them when they're you know, with the ability to vote. So she came out and said the plan. So if you didn't believe me that all the illegal immigrants would be voting in 2024, there you go. They came out and said it. What more do you want me to say? I mean, it's in your face, man. Yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? You're gonna deny that? I don't know. You you do what you want. We've got to we've got to do what we can. And uh, by the way, Sebastian Gorka, listening to him on the radio, and I, I totally agree. Is uh, you can't. You can't just take your 15 minutes and go vote anymore. You've got to be at the polls. You got to watch the, you know, put up watch teams on the ballot boxes and sit there with cell phones and film it. Uh, you know, do, think of, you know, whatever creative way you can do to try to true the vote. You know, be a ballot counter. Get in there. I mean, I, I want to be a poll worker, but I'm disabled. And they want you there for a long period of time. But if you can donate your time as a poll worker, by all means, do it. I mean, do whatever you can. If it's only just one hour a day at a ballot box, that's better than doing nothing, right? You gotta, if you're, if you're on the uh, Christian and you, you're worried about the nation, you've got to true the vote as best you can. There's no way these Democrat lunatics are gonna vote 30 million illegal immigrants. You gotta understand that. So getting back to bankruptcy for just a minute, because I wanted to talk about a couple of good things that are gonna come out of all this. Is, you know, once the government bankrupts, you know, 35 trillion now. I mean, I don't know if you watch Redacted. They keep the uh, debt clock right behind them. I'm not sure if we've crossed it quite yet, but it will probably be within a day or two if we haven't already. Uh, and that's how fast it's going up. Probably, what is it, a trillion dollars every uh, 100 days? So, I mean, can you imagine? Do you know what a trillion is? I mean, what, when you put dollars back to back, uh, I think it stretches past the sun. <laughs> across the solar system. I don't know. There's people that put that out. You know, I'm like, dang on. You know, I hadn't really thought about that. Also, getting back to assets, uh, I was watching um, Jeremiah Babe. I don't know if you ever watch his channel. Uh, he, I used to watch him pretty religiously, but he just kind of beats on the same same topics over and over and over again. But uh, he did do a recent episode where they were in a, a coin shop, and it was a reputable coin shop. Uh, you know, so you got to find if so if you could find a good coin shop in your area, uh, you might want to go in and uh, if they have some junk silver, uh, you know, go ahead and buy it, especially the dimes, because once the dollar's gone and everything is completely devalued, you know, you're going to have to barter for stuff. And uh, another thing that I want to do, and I haven't done it yet, I'm preaching to you something that I haven't done yet, is I want to start establishing a relationship with the local farmers, or a, even just a farmer. You know, maybe I, I can work out something where I can donate some time to get some food and, you know, and, and also barter, you know, give them a, give them a, I mean, when the dollar's gone, that is, you know, give them a silver coin. And I, and, and by the way, there's been, uh, 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 there was a, I, I can't remember whether it was a survey done and a lot of farmers were questioned. They said, would you accept uh, gold, silver, platinum or palladium for, for uh, food? And they said, yeah. Absolutely they would. So uh, you can buy it right now with silver if you wanted to. So that's, uh, that's currency. Any, any, any item that you can exchange for food, that's currency. Okay? So I just wanted to get on that. And, and the other good news is, um, is what I wanted to talk about was um, Ukraine. Or bad news, depending on which side you're on. 
because uh, the Russians, they just advanced two more villages, and so the, the entire front lines are crumbling right now. And so the war, I think, is going to be over a lot quicker than anybody anticipated. I'm not sure, because they just wiped out two more battalions. You got 2,000 plus Ukrainians dying every day. I mean, you can't, you can't maintain that and fight a war. You know, this whole attrition strategy by the Russians was brilliant. Uh, you know, now a lot of Russians have died too, you know, in a war that never had to take place. Uh, so, and I wonder, I'm just wondering what NATO is going to do once uh, Ukraine is, is completely, because the only thing I think that we've got left is unconditional surrender. Uh, Putin, about three weeks back, he offered a final peace plan, which was actually a good peace plan. Uh, and it was rejected. And he said, that's it, no more. We're marching all the way to the Dnieper River. Uh, Scott Ritter's speculating that now they're going to take over all Russian-speaking areas of Ukraine, which I think includes Kherson, certainly includes Odessa. Of course, all the Zaporizhia region will now be Russian. Uh, of course, you know, Crimea, that was back in 2014. Uh, what was it? It might have been another town that, well, you know, Kiev uh, really used to be a Russian town. I'm not sure. That, Scott didn't mention that, though, so... You know, who am I? I Scott is, is the premier authority on, on all that stuff. Uh, anyway, I, I always bow to him. You know, I just follow along and, and watch, uh, watch the news as best I can. But the, uh, the, the other good news I wanted to point out is, uh, you know, once the, we get these illegal alien riots here in the United States, or riots in the cities and everything, you know, they're going to be probably, like I said, there's concentration camps going up all around the United States because uh, they're preparing for this event. So imagine we're going to have martial law. And the good news, that here's the good news, that for all, all uh, uh, MAGA uh, Americans, when, when I say MAGA, any, any patriot out there, you don't have to be MAGA, anybody that loves the United States or loves our country, uh, the good news is, is that we've given, hell, massive amounts of weapons to Israel and to Ukraine. So our stockpiles are either uh, depleted, empty, or very, very low. And so when they declare martial law, if we offer some sort of resistance, I think that the military, the ones that will fight on the side of the, the leftist Democrat lunatics, uh, they're going to run out of munitions pretty damn quick, you know, because they've given them all away. And, uh, and then if, if you take out the, uh, the manufacturing facilities, they're not going to be able to make more. So the good news is, is that by supporting Ukraine, not only bankrupting the country with the, but the dollar, making it a hell of a lot faster, we've also given all of our weapons away. So that means that they can't turn that in inward on the American people, which is where I think we're heading. So that's, uh, that's the good news. The other thing I wanted to talk about with saving the dollar, okay, because everybody says, well, then they're just going to come out with a central bank digital currency. Maybe so, maybe not. Trump just said he embraced Bitcoin, which blew my mind. <laughs> I, was like, I mean, I, I guess he, he said cryptocurrencies might be the way to go. And that's the, that, that includes other cryptocurrencies. Uh, what is it, the one that Elon likes? Like Doge? I don't, I, I don't know anything about crypto. Johnny Bravo's got a course on crypto if you want to learn how to buy, sell, and trade it. And I do want to get his swing trade course at some point. But right now, you know, I just I haven't had time to do stuff like that. You know, hell, I'm, I have a hard time just getting these videos up. But anyway, so uh, that's the good news. But I wanted to talk about Fort Knox for a second. I'm 60 years old. All right, I'll just put that out there. And all my life, and of course, as a baby, I don't know. But I don't think anybody I know has ever been in Fort Knox. I know Rand Paul was trying to get in there. I don't think there's any gold in Fort Knox. And I don't think there's any gold below the banks in New York. I think all the gold in the United States has been siphoned off. You know, and right now, you know, China, China's been buying up gold like crazy. India has been buying up gold like crazy. Russia has been buying up gold like crazy. The BRICS uh, nations, all the BRICS nations are buying up gold. So you can see when they come out with a new uh, monetary system. And when I say system, it's not just a currency uh, or a digital currency, which it could be uh, when BRICS finalizes everything. It's also a means of exchange. Okay, so it's kind of like the SWIFT system. You know, that's how we deal with the, the world, except the SWIFT system is expensive. Okay, and it's, supposedly the BRIC system is going to be much more efficient, uh, much, much, much cheaper, 
which is really going to entice the well, nations around the world to adopt the BRICS uh, system of exchange versus the uh, SWIFT. So that's, that's all going to happen rapidly within the next, it could be within the next year, but I mean, it's definitely within the next couple of years, I think. So uh, that's going to be crazy. And then when we find out when the dollar's worthless that we've got no gold under the banks, what are we going to do? What, what are you going to back the currency with? So uh, the other good news I was going to tell you is the deep state. Well, they're not getting paid anymore. They don't have any skills, man. These people have been sucking, grifting off of you and me their entire lives. They've, they've never learned. I bet none of them have ever worked on a car. Probably none of them have ever learned how to plant a tomato plant and grow it in their backyard. Probably none of them know a damn thing about buying, selling real estate or fixing up a house or how to put a faucet in, you know, anything. So these people, all these deep state people that have been grifting off of you and me, they're going to be walking the streets going, what do I do now? Because they're not getting paid. All their money's worthless because they probably don't, they're probably not out buying gold, silver, and platinum like you and me, you know, if you're following along and what I'm telling you, or getting prepared like uh, the economic ninja to buy up real estate, you know, pay or paying off your debts. Imagine a lot of them are heavily in debt. In fact, they'll be the ones defaulting on their credit cards. So the deep state is going to disappear overnight. And that's our chance to get a government back in by and for the people. All right, so uh, I don't know if you're following along, but uh, Biden has proposed a new constitutional amendment to impose term limits on the Supreme Court. Now, I'm all for imposing term limits on Congress, but I'm not for term limits on the Supreme Court. Okay, the reason why they're in there for life is so that they don't fear, uh, you know, losing their job. And then, of course, you, that would give the Democrats, who will be perpetually in power, once they get 30 million illegal immigrants voting, um, that, uh, that then they control two branches, well, th actually three more or less. I mean, you might as well look at it. You know, we at, at that point, it's a totalitarian takeover, and we have no say on anything that takes place in the United States anymore. So, uh, whatever. If they, if, they, if they do stack the Supreme Court, that's it, man. If they get this uh, constitutional amendment to impose term limits on the Supreme Court, we're done. We're done at that point. So uh, that was the next uh, thing. And also, uh, I don't know if you're watching the media right now. Holy moly, to talk about a full court press. I mean, Kamala, the queen, she is, uh, she's the best thing since Swiss cheese, man. <laughs> I mean, she's, uh, she's the goddess of the United States. I mean, the, the whole media apparatus is in lockstep going on and on about how Kamala is the greatest president or going to be the greatest president in the history of the United States. Have you noticed how they're dressing her up now, making her, trying to make her look more presidential? Imagine they're trying to control that cackling laugh. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're probably saying, you know, don't laugh no more. Don't laugh no more. I mean, they're, they're doing everything they can. And, you know, the, the funny part is on the, uh, on the radio, even on right-wing radio, they always talk about that uh, Biden was replaced. It wasn't. He wasn't replaced. That was a coup, man. <laughs> Obama engineered that whole damn thing. You know, that was a takeover of the United States government by Obama. Holy moly. And, it, it not, and then they, they never come out and call it a coup. They just say, well, you know, Biden stepped down. He didn't step down. No way he stepped down. That guy's got an ego the size of, you know, a, a, a freaking beach ball, man. No way he stepped down. That was a coup. He was forced out. And everybody that says, oh, Biden stepped down for the good of the country. Hell no. Hell no, that didn't take place. That was a coup. All right. So I just had to get that out out of my system. All right, so if they stack the Supreme Court, we're done. I forgot I wanted to put out a plea to all Americans that were at the uh, the Butler, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, you know, the uh, shooting of Trump, all right? If you've got cell phone footage, get it up on X, get it out in social media, because right now the FBI is hunting down those cell phones uh, and, uh, they're, and they're confiscating them. Because they want, they're burying the evidence. They they bury they they whitewashed the entire uh, crime scene uh, there in uh, Butler, Pennsylvania. They went to um, uh, what is that Crooks kid's uh, house and they they cleaned it. I bet there ain't even a fingerprint left of that kid anymore in, in his house. So that that evidence has been uh, squashed. And now they're hunting down the cell phones to make sure no more footage comes out about uh, what actually took place that day. 
So you got to get your, your cell phone footage out in public or hide your cell phone somewhere. I mean, or, you know, do something. But it's, it's got to be made public before the FBI can confiscate it and erase your cell phone. All right? If you got a cell phone, you got footage, get it out now. Get it out now before the FBI takes it away from you. All right? That's my plea. Oh, I had to apologize for this. Uh, I put a post up on uh, X last night that uh, Israel had bombed Lebanon. And so today I was looking for uh, news on that event. Because, uh, you know, I always uh, try to verify. And, uh, you know, I violated the Dan Bongino rule. I, I jumped the gun because it was a news report that uh, I think is false. Uh, I couldn't find any evidence of it, so I deleted that tweet. So just so you know, I always correct myself if, I, if I've made a mistake. Now, that doesn't mean that Israel's not going to bomb Lebanon. In fact, uh, right now they just had a big uh, conference. I guess Netanyahu might be back in Israel. And, uh, and they're pretty much, I think it was almost a unanimous vote to go to war, more or less, with uh, um, Lebanon. So uh, we'll see. So maybe I was a bit premature in my post, but I think it might be accurate here before too long. Uh, and, of course, they're beating the war drums to bomb Iran, which ain't going to do no damn good. Iran, well, Iran and Hezbollah, they got everything underground. Everybody's learning their lesson. The days of the United States and Israel being able to fly over and kill a bunch of civilians uh, with 2,000-pound uh, bombs are over. I mean, if they can't get penetrate, you know, 90 feet under the ground with a bunk and busting bomb like the Russians can do with those Kinzhal hypersonic missiles, uh, I, I don't see where they're going to affect much damage. Now, they did, if you follow my videos uh, a while back, what, about a week ago, they blew up a, um, a fuel dump on the, in the port in Yemen. That was a hell of an explosion. So they, don't get me wrong, they can still do a lot of damage, the you know, uh, U.S. and uh, Israel. But unless you got boots on the ground, I don't see where you're going to defeat Iran or Hezbollah. And, and if they do attack Hezbollah, I think, it, well, I think we already see in the beginning of the end of Israel as it is. I mean, their economy is wrecked. You know, the Houthis haven't, uh, the port is shut down there in Israel because the Houthis aren't allowing any shipping to go through. Uh, I imagine right now the uh, weapons, because, you know, Russia's been conducting a parallel war. Uh, there's a lot of weapons on their way to Yemen, I imagine, through the, probably the Iranian channels. Uh, another news story that you probably haven't heard anything about that blew my mind uh, was, um, and I want to say it was Mali, or yeah, I, anyway, it's an African nation, uh, one, of the, one of the ones that just uh, uh, couped and, uh, and aligned with Russia. Well, anyway, they, they were, there was a Wagner uh, convoy, uh, escorted convoy uh, of troops in uh, Mali, and uh, they got ambushed uh, by, um, well, I don't know who ambushed them, but I mean, it was a massacre. They wiped out a lot of Wagner uh, forces, and uh, there was a, a graphic video of all the bodies laying around the convoy that uh, were all dead. It was, a, it was a, I mean, it, they, they ambushed them butt right. Uh, so I don't know, Wagner's usually pretty professional. I'm surprised they allowed themselves to be ambushed like that, but uh, it was a massacre. So if you want dead Russians, you could be happy today. There's a lot more dead Russians. Uh, especially the Wagner forces. Just saying. Oh yeah, more news on uh, my last video. I showed you uh, the graphic depiction of those children that were killed in Israel. Well, it turns out that wasn't Israel. That was, uh, from what I understand, Syria. And uh, those were uh, Syrian uh, citizens, like uh, dual citizenship. They're also citizens of Israel. Uh, so, and uh, the, 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 the scuttlebutt is, and it seems like it's, it seems true, because Hezbollah... You know, I, I, whatever you want to say about them, usually they're pretty honest about things. And they said, no, they didn't launch that missile to kill kids. It was, I guess it was a target somewhat nearby, a military target. And the uh, speculation at this point is, is that the Iron Dome shot up a missile to take out the, uh, the missile that was coming in on the military target. And it, might have, it, might, it must have hit it. And, uh, and that was debris coming down from the Israeli uh, Iron Dome missile that actually uh, hit the, uh, the Hezbollah missile that was coming in. So, so there's a lot of, lot of misinformation there. Uh, you know, if you listen to right-wing hosts, they talk about how Hezbollah deliberately targeted Israeli children playing a soccer game. No, it wasn't. These were Syrians in Syria, from what I understand. Now, I don't hold my feet to the fire on that, 
But that's the, if you watch uh, Judge Napolitano, uh, his, uh, today's video on with Alistair Cook, uh, he, he describes the whole thing a lot better than I could just now. If you want to get all the details on, on everything surrounding that event, uh, you can watch that video. I encourage you. Judge Napolitano is great. I wish I could do what these people do, but, you know, I'm just one dude, as, as the ninja says, with a moha or a bald head or a shaved head. <laughs> and I don't have a staff of people. I can't even make thumbnails yet, you know. I know that you go to uh, Canvas and, you know, make your thumbnails and make them professional. I just don't have time for that, man. I'm lucky if I can even get a damn video up. You know, by the time I make the video and edit it and everything else and then post it, you know. And that was another thing. I figured out, this is a tip for videographers or anybody who makes videos, was I couldn't get my video to go up on Odyssey. And it kept rejecting it because of the bitrate. So I tried editing it down with the bitrate. And, you know, and then it would give me a different error message saying my bitrate's still too high. So finally I went into the help on uh, Odyssey. And there was actually a, a piece of software. I'll put a, a text up above that I had to download. And what it does is it encodes the video specifically for the bitrate that Odyssey needs. Uh, and I can't remember the name of it. It's on my computer back home. And uh, so that's how I finally got the, the video up to Odyssey. Now, as far as posting on Parlor, I couldn't get the video uploaded there either. But once I dropped the bitrate in the editing software and re, uh, you know, re, redid the video, I was able to get it up on Parlor. So I tell you, learning all this stuff, it takes a lot of time, man. You know, just posting the damn videos, I have a hard time. <laughs> you know, cause, but I did want to point out that I'm now, you know, now that I know what to do, I'm on Odyssey. I mean, I'm posting on Parlor. I'm on, of course, X, and I'm on YouTube, and I'm on Rumble. So, and that's as far as I go. I'm not going out like the Duran to the Rockfin, and I mean, when he lists all the places that they post, I'm like, good God, I'd be forever posting videos. You know, I mean, my 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 gigabyte uh, internet is pretty damn good, but you know, it ain't. It still takes a while just to upload the video. And then you go, of course, you got to give it a title. You got to put a description in. You know, it's a, it's a hell of a lot of work, man. So just listening to the radio with Mark Levin. He's a Zionist. He's a Zionist lunatic. But uh, he was he's going on to buy a list of all the ammo that we're withholding from Israel. And uh, I don't think we're withholding it. <laughs> in fact, I think the Democrat Party would, would send everything we got to Israel if we had it. And that's that's my point. I don't think he understands that we're running low on supplies. I think the reason that we're not sending ammo to Israel is because our stocks are so depleted that maybe the Pentagon's saying, look, man, until we manufacture more, we got to at least hold a little bit back before we, you know, but I'm, like I said, I'm all encouraged. I hope they do send what's left in the stocks because then when the military's turned on the American people, they ain't going to have nothing left. So I think Levin is wrong. We're not withholding it. We just don't have it. Now, maybe it was a Freudian slip, but uh, if you didn't know, uh, Levin's pretty damn plugged in with the um, Netanyahu government. In fact, he was over there hobnobbing with them not too long ago. I can't remember the exact dates. And uh, he just uh, said that Israel's going to need these weapons when they go to war with Hezbollah. When they go to war with Hezbollah. So it doesn't appear there's any doubt in his Zionist mind that Israel's going to attack uh, Lebanon and Hezbollah. So I just wanted to throw that out because, like I said, he's well plugged in. Uh, you know, imagine they, he probably calls up Netanyahu on a regular basis. <laughs> and then they, they hobnob on the telephone for, you know, 20 minutes or so just to, just chewing the fat, right? Chewing the fat. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's a pretty uh, definitive authority there. If Mark Levin's saying when they attack Hezbollah. So we, I believe it's pretty much... Uh, decided and who knows i mean things can change right but it looks like we're heading for regional war in the middle east i don't know if you follow my videos but the birds are back they were following me one day for everywhere look at him following me again nope maybe they're taking off all right well i just saw the weirdest thing <laughs> this guy walked past me and you know how when you hike you know one arm goes back one arm goes forward the other arm goes back the other arm goes forward well, this guy, both arms were moving in unison as he was hiking, you know. And I, I've never seen that before. I was like, that is weird, man. That's weird. Anyway, the other piece of news I hadn't 
talked about yet was uh, Erdogan came out in a speech. If you know Erdogan, Turkey, Turkey's president or prime minister, I never know, you know, what the title is. Anyway, uh, he said that uh, Turkey may have to move into uh, Israel at some point. We must be very strong so that Israel cannot strike Palestine. Just like we entered Karabakh, just like we entered Libya, we can do the same thing to them. There is nothing stopping us from doing this. We must only be strong to take these steps. President Erdogan is ranting and raving again. He is a danger to the Middle East. We won't accept threats from a wannabe dictator. Erdogan is going down the path of Saddam Hussein and threatens to attack Israel. He should just remember what happened there and how that ended. Now, Erdogan's the biggest bag of hot air <laughs> that ever existed. So I, the odds of that happening are probably nil and none. But, but if Israel gets into a regional war with Iran and Hezbollah, you could see the Turks get involved at that point. So maybe the, even though he's full of hot air at the moment, that might not be true here soon. So uh, just telling you how things might go, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, it turns out, you know, I, I was right about two shooters and now they're saying three uh, on the day that Trump was shot. I still can't believe he's alive. When you've got that much firepower coming at you, how the hell did he survive that? Blows my mind. God, if you don't believe in God, there was divine intervention on that day. <laughs> I mean, when, when you got three shooters shooting at you and they, and they had time to, to mark up their shots and it was from a short distance, no way he's supposed to be alive, no way, no how. Well, the other piece of evidence that came out on the, uh, the Trump shooting day, and this was pointed out, I think it was, uh, they caught it in a video that uh, they took off of a, a cop's camera. You know, even though they all had them turned off that day, uh, maybe uh, one of them, uh, it was after the shooting. Uh, during the shooting, all the cameras were off. I guess after the shooting, maybe they cut them back on again. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, we had some footage of the kid's head after he had been shot. Now, I was telling you, because the body was halfway down the roof, uh, that, uh, you know, if, if the head got shot with a, a sniper rifle, it would have just about blown his head completely apart. You know, the, 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 you imagine a watermelon just exploding. That's what it would have looked like. He would have been the headless, uh, headless crook, you know. So, uh, but what the, the, the footage showed was there was just a tiny hole in his head. That wasn't no damn sniper rifle that hit him. I think that was a shot from the window of that second story of that building that was next door that took him out. I don't think the sniper hit him at all. That's just my opinion. Because otherwise, I mean, there would have been blood everywhere. And remember, there was just a trickle that was going down that roof. So I think we got a little more evidence that this was a setup. It was a setup beyond belief. And now all the evidence has been scrubbed by the FBI. So I imagine we're not going to learn anything else other than the, the, the evidence that we've got right now, unless we get some more video posted, and that's why I was begging people, don't let the FBI get your phone. Post it. Post it now. And if you don't believe me about the FBI, I encourage you to go back and watch some of Christopher Ray's testimony to Congress. That was the most pathetic testimony I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, the guy's not an idiot. And that's the way he came across. He, he was obfuscating, you know, evading, didn't answer any of the questions didn't know anything, or pretended he didn't know anything, uh, hadn't, uh, you know, simple questions like, and then he answered with cartridges, they weren't cart, and, it, and he might have been truthful, it might have been eight cartridges, that means the bullet was still in them, they didn't get fired, but uh, he didn't clarify that, because if they'd been fired, they'd be shells, right, so, uh, so maybe he was being honest right there, so I encourage you to go back and watch that pathetic, uh, uh, you know, what he did with Congress, the other thing, I wanted to point out to you, if you didn't think it was a conspiracy to kill Trump, was they put together a uh, commission to investigate the shooting, which I told you they can't investigate anything because all the evidence has been scrubbed at this point. And the people that they put up on the committee, it's, it's another Warren Commission, they're not going to do anything. So don't don't think that the Congress is actually looking into anything at this point. The only, the only investigation we're ever going to get is Chris Martin's and... Uh, with the peak prosperity, I think that's about the best. And of course, a few other people on YouTube and a few uh, gunman experts. You know, the, the sniper thing, I can't take credit for that. I can't remember who was talking about that, but I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. That hit would have blown up like a watermelon. Sorry, I had to cut off there. The helicopter noise was getting 
a little bit loud here in Central Florida. We have a lot of helicopters. Uh, not too many, well no jet planes, but a lot of biplanes. And they can get pretty loud sometimes. Anyway, by the way, I just passed a dead snake on the trail back there. They're gone at people. If it's a snake and it's leaving you alone, leave it alone. They serve a purpose. They kill mice. They're good for the environment. You ain't got to kill them. Damn it. I love, and I love snakes, man. I mean, if you bite you, kill it. Because then you need to identify what kind of snake just bit you. Other than that, leave the damn snake alone, you freaking idiots. Oh, man, it just pissed me off. I'm sorry. I got off on a tangent. So getting back to Christopher Ray for just a minute. So he even was stupid enough to say that it could have been shrapnel. Now, let me explain what shrapnel is. Shrapnel uses an artillery shell. Boom, it blows up. It's got a metal casing. All of that metal flies apart because of the explosion. That shrapnel goes out and kills everything around it. Those are just pieces of flying pieces of metal all around it. Now, if the bullet had hit, let's say the microphone or maybe a railing, okay, and the, the bullet fractured into a bunch of different pieces, that would be shrapnel. Now, it was a bullet that went right past Trump's ear. We got, we got visual civilian confirmation of that. The, uh, the next thing that Daniel Daniels, and I wish I could take credit for some of this stuff, because uh, you know what, when they were up on the roof, they were showing the casings. Anyway, the spent rounds that were on the roof, okay? Uh, the shells, excuse me, okay, I'm sorry. I, I had casings on my brain because that's what that idiot said in, to Congress. But anyway, so um, there was some on the other side of the, uh, the, 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 the roof uh, awning piece right there. There were some to the right and some to the left. And, you know, I, it, it didn't hit me at the time. Sometimes the obvious, you know, you, you should just smack you right in the head. You know, when, and so Dan Daniels, he was showing you know, in a video of his, when a, when a gun ejects the casing, it flies out to the right. Now, it could, it could fly a good 5, 10, 10 feet or so, okay, but it's only going one direction. And no way it's going to flip over on the other side of the roof or end up on the left-hand side, okay? So that's another piece of it. So that means they were planting uh, uh, shells all around the body. I don't think the kid got a shot off. I don't think the kid got a shot off, and I think what it was a Freudian slip when he said casings. Yes, they probably found eight bullets still in the magazine of the kid's gun that never got fired. Well, yeah, another piece of news. I forgot about this one. Uh, I think it might have been a couple days ago. I don't know. I don't remember when, but there was a huge fire in California burning. And the reason I wanted to talk about that for just a second is that you, you understand that California, they don't do fire management. And that's why they get all these wildfires. That, these, they're all Democrat lunatics, man. They're all Democrat lunatics that run the state. Gavin Newsom's a complete idiot. You know, when was the last time you heard of a wildfire here in Florida? You know what? Because we do fire management. Okay? And if they would just do fire management in California, guess what? They wouldn't be pumping all that carbon dioxide into the atmosphere with all their forests burning down. Just saying. Speaking of Gavin Newsom, <laughs> I completely forgot this tiny piece of news. Uh, I think it might have been an ex post, but they said that California is now cleaning up the homeless problem. Now, I don't know how you clean that up. I mean, are they going to put them in uh, those concentration camps, or uh, are they going to just uh, build tent cities for them, or what? So anyway, I, and the reason for that is they said that Gavin may end up on the uh, Democrat ticket some way, somehow, and that's why they wanted to clean that up so that that can't be used as a talking point against him in, in any sort of uh, Republican ads or maybe even a debate. Just wanted to point that out. Now, I'd, I haven't seen, you know, them rounding up the homeless and, and taking them off the streets. It was just a post that I saw, and it would make sense if they're prepping Gavin Newsom for some sort of federal run for them to clean up that homeless problem 
that they have in California. You know, all the poop on the streets and the, and the needles. Remember when uh, Z came to uh, San Francisco <laughs> and, and all those tents and homeless disappeared overnight? So don't tell me they can't make it happen. They can, they can make it happen anytime they want. And if he's going to do some sort of presidential run or maybe be the vice VP pick or whatever, that would make sense for them to clean that up. I do want to comment on the uh, Trump meeting with Netanyahu. I don't know if you saw that video or uh, a couple clips where Trump was going on about he's, he's the best Israeli supporter in the history of the world. Anyway, uh, did that look like a cabinet meeting to you? <laughs> was, was that a shadow government operating in exile? The reason I say that is that a bunch of uh, leftist lunatics on, on X right now saying that, uh, you know, Trump is an uh, egomaniac. No, no, if you're, if he is actually putting together a cabinet, uh, that was one of the big problems back in 2016 I wanted to comment on. He came in, well, he was a businessman. He didn't know shit about government. <laughs> he certainly didn't know how bad it was, and he certainly didn't know that they were conspiring against him. You know, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the uh, Biden, I mean, the... Uh, Obama administration, Hillary Clinton, the uh, dossier, the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, the impeachment for just asking a question out of Ukraine. I mean, you know, think about it. So, but so now this time, what I'm saying is, it's called preparation. So what that showed me is he is putting together a team that at day one he's going to come in prepared to be president of the United States. And I think that's a good thing, and that means he's also picking all his own people. I mean, I think he's learned his lesson. You know, think about it. Christopher Ray was put in by, by Trump. Fauci, he worshipped Fauci. Fauci killed 10 million people. He's still there. You know, when you think about it, there's a, there's a lot of people. Pompeo, Pompeo was against Trump. In fact, he came out against him after the fact. So the fact that Trump is putting together a cabinet, I think is a good thing. That shows he's, he's preparing. He's going to be ready day one. And all them leftist lunatics, I, I hope they watch this video because <laughs> now they'll know really what's taking place. That just means that, that Trump this time is prepared and hopefully surrounding himself with people. I mean, look at it. He had John Bolton in his original cabinet. I mean, it, he had the worst people in, the planet, in his original cabinet. You know, everybody says it's poor judgment. Well, I mean, when you think about it, you don't know that you can't trust these people. I mean, you know, he was just trying to put something together quick when he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Uh, you know, he was a businessman. He wasn't a career politician. He didn't have the connections. This time, I think he's going to be prepared. And that gives me great hope. Great hope if he can overcome the 30 million illegal immigrant votes or ballots. I don't call them votes anymore. They're just ballots. I've already put my ballot in for the primary, and I call it a ballot. I don't call it a vote no more because uh, I'm sure that it'll, it'll be, uh, uh, even here in Florida, there's a lot of, you know, because we have ballots rather than uh, a vote. You know, there's, there's probably cheating that goes on here in Florida as well. Just just not on the monumental scale like in Philadelphia or Detroit or any of those places where, good Lord, it's Gigantic is out of Atlanta <laughs> pulling votes out from underneath the table, a fake water leak. I mean, oh my God. 81 million votes my ass. 81 million votes my ass. 81 million ballots. Oh yeah. 81 million ballots. Oh yeah.